Ace Podcast. You're listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Season 2, Episode 4, with Jonas and TNT Dynamite. Yo, yo. And special guest host, Melody Peng. Hi, guys. Uh, before we start, guys, I have a fact to make you wonder. I saw that, <laughs> the, <laughs> right, the can opener wasn't invented until 48 years after the tin can. How the hell did they open cans? Wait, wait, you mean like the can openers with the the crank on the side? Right. 48 years. Huh. Pop tabs, man. Those are the way to go anyway. Pop can openers uh, were a step back. She's a genius! <laughs> Dude, I, I get so happy when I go and buy a can of green beans and it has the pop tab instead of like yeah. the can opener. I get psyched. But, she went straight for pop tabs. I was thinking of like these Neanderthals slamming cans on the side of rocks. Oddly enough, <laughs> when, I read, when, they did it. when I read about it, that's how they said they opened them. They they beat the shit out of them until until the stuff opened up, and that's how they would eat them. So the tin can was invented in 1810, and the can opener in 1858. So uh, now that we gave you that pointless knowledge, let's get rolling with the show. One, two, three. And welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. Once again, I am your host, Jonas. I am here with my co-host, TNT Dynamite. Say hello to everyone. What's up, everybody? TNT Dynamite here, the explosive one. TNT, D-I-N-O, M-I-G-H-T. Glad to be back. It never gets old, man. <laughs> I love it, man. All right, and we actually have someone making their Crazy Town debut, the lovely, the talented, the yoga mastering actress extraordinaire, Miss Melody Pang. Say hello to everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I think you totally oversold me there. Oh, uh, don't, <laughs> don't be so modest. It's okay. But we do want to thank you for taking the time to be a guest host. And actually, I reached out to you so long ago now, I'm not even sure... What the how long it was, but you know we we've been work, we've been talking back and forth for a while, so I'm glad that I finally have you on. We're happy that you're here. Um, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Why don't you go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, anything you want them to know? Pimp some of your projects where they can find you on the interwebs. Any of that stuff. Sure, sounds good. So um, I mostly work in comedy in Hollywood, but basically, shoot, I'll do whatever people pay me to do, but not in a <laughs> slutty way. I have yet been asked to show my ass or tits. Um, so TBD on that. Um, I'm not sure if that's a compliment it. or... <laughs> oh my God, you're right. I'm a little bit offended now. <laughs> Nobody in this town wants to see me naked. What is this? <laughs> um, so I've worked on a few shows, um, uh, Criminal Minds, American Horror Story, Jane the Virgin, and I have an episode of The Mindy Project. Uh, it's episode what? one of the last season, so tune in for that. I think I might get like 10 cents every time somebody clicks Woo-hoo! play on Hulu. That's I awesome. Don't know. What, uh, what, were, which, uh, <laughs> which... Royalty in the building, listeners. Royalty. <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, uh, what episode or season of American Horror Story were you on? I used to watch that show. Um, this past season. Which was that the Coven or? Oh no, gosh! No, that was that was that was bad. one about the haunted house, right? <laughs> it was no, that was the first season. No, no, there was another haunted house. This it's later where it was like a two parter. It was like a reality show inside a show, but it was all fake. I'll be very honest. I have I would not have watched any of the shows that I booked had I not had to go to go in for the audition. <laughs> so when I was there, like, oh, I've never heard of that show. I'm like, it's totally cool. Um, the last season, there were a few episodes where uh, the group was at Paley Fest, and that was um, the kind of the scene that I was involved with. Oh, okay. okay, that's cool. That's cool. So you, uh, so you like to do? If you do like anything, basically, you can you can get involved in in Hollywood. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I mean, the network gigs are always amazing, and it's always great to get opportunities like that. But I've actually 
made a lot of connections doing smaller budget stuff, even some unpaid work with people who are very well recognized in the industry. Uh And once you build those connections, they'll just call you in in the future for other projects without you having to audition. So it really is paying it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's very shot. She's taking a shot at us because we're not paying her. Yeah, right? She's like, F you guys. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it sounds like to me. No, no. We're we're, we're just like, I guess I do unpaid work sometimes. (laughs) Wait, you guys are paying me for this song. Oh, oops. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, the check's in the mail, though. They promise. I, I just want to know how it was when you when you won your first Grammy. That's the music. <laughs> <laughs> she was featured really? on, she didn't mention she was featured on Kanye's album, too. That's where she won the Grammy. 500 more clicks because somebody thinks she won a Grammy. <laughs> right, right. There you go. <laughs> oh, yes. I've won all sorts of awards. Like most right. awesome, most awesome actress in a Taco Bell commercial. I like that Taco <laughs> Bell commercial. I thought that was sweet. Yes, I was. That one didn't win any awards. Oh, I'm boy. just kidding. I haven't won jack shit. But you know what? I, a really like good mentality for me is I'm not here to win any Oscars or Emmys or like do something that's just completely. I'm, I'm not like a, a theater trained serious actor. Oscar actor or actress or anything. I'm just here to freaking have fun, be myself, make people laugh, and if people think that's worth mentioning in some sort of praiseworthy article or any sort of recognition, <laughs> awesome. But if not, it's so much fun. Just meeting other creative types. Oh, I bet. Is that a? Uh, is that? I mean, is this all you do? Is just acting and stuff, or do you do like side hustles or? Um, I tutor Mandarin a couple times a week, just Shut occasionally. Up. I, I saw <laughs> that you're fluent in in Mandarin. Um, oh. can, can you say uh, can you can you say something to the to the audience like welcoming them to the Crazy Town Podcast for all of our listeners that are that speak Mandarin? Oh, sure. Is there a, is that a big demographic for you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, thousands <laughs> upon thousands of Mandarin listeners. <laughs> You know, I actually don't know how to say podcast. I'm going to leave that one in English, but... Say, uh, say Crazy Town Show, then. That'll work. Oh, okay. Uh, 欢迎光临大家来听, um, That's it. That's so awesome. All right, look. So I had Google Translate open, and she just called us assholes. Oh, she said that we suck. <laughs> oh, my God. You're not fooling me, lady. No, that was... That was beautiful. Thank you very much. I so, um, so I did, I did. I did look at your website a little bit. I saw that you went to the University of Michigan. Go blue. We um, we're actually wait, from 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 Northeast wait Ohio. Wait a minute, dude. You oh, you're from a, Ohio. You brought a fucking Michigan chick on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, think, my God. I think, I, think I would here. tell you that after we had you on the show in case you did, oh, did, did, decided God. to hate us up front. So, But actually, oh, I, I don't really care about Ohio State either way. So I, I'm more yeah. of a what, – what are you doing over there, unprofessional Paul? Oh, I'm Wait, sorry. What are you doing, <laughs> fucking taking out your fucking daily meds? I was, eat, I was eating a piece of candy, dude. Can I eat some candy? Yeah, on the break. How about that? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> no, any, anyways, no, we're really glad that you're here. We're, uh, uh, we have we have a awesome show planned for today. Uh, we have some crazy news that we always have to make everybody's head hurt even more than the intro. Uh, Melody is going to challenge TNT Dynamite to a one-on-one game of Are You Urban? And we get to hear a story about me being pulled over by a dickhead cop. Imagine there's actually dickhead cops out there. <laughs> <laughs> Never run into one. Yeah, right? Before we start any of that, we do have some fan interaction today. So, um, <clears throat> remember everybody, please send us in any emails, tweets, questions, comments, crazy news links, anything you want us to discuss, crazytownpodcast at gmail.com. We also have our Crazy Town Podcast rant and rave voicemail line. So call and leave, a, leave us a message, 512 512- Tax one nip. Don't judge me, Melody. That's the only acronym I could come up with the, the phone number I got for the show. I love it. First off, I wanted to shout out to uh, Home Video Hustle at HVH Podcast on Twitter. They reached out to me one day and said, just finishing, finishing listening to your latest episode. Good shit, man. Had me bursting out laughing multiple times. So I want to say thank you, guys. That's exactly what we look to do on the show here. All right, guys. I'm going to I'm gonna get right into my cop story. So recently... I, I, I drove a, a ton. I drove, uh, I, I'm in Texas. I drove uh, all the way to Minnesota. It was 17 and a half hours drive. 
It did not get pulled over. Nothing. No problem. I was probably speeding. Minnesota to Ohio. I drove 13 hours. Nothing. So I come home from, coming home from Ohio to Texas. Uh, I, drew, I did 17 hours in a day and stayed overnight, which left about five or six hours the next morning to drive home. I barely had any sleep and I got, I got on the road. I'm driving. I'm not even speeding. I'm going down the freeway. There is a semi in the left hand lane going like 60 miles an hour. So I, have, I come, I'm going 75, which is the speed limit. I, so I had to come up on this bitch really fast. I have to slow down. I get, I get pretty close to him. The semi is going so slow. There's another semi passing him on the right hand side. So I can't get over because he's going like 60 miles an hour. So are you like boxed in by I'm, semis yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, I'm boxed in. And there's another semi passing the semi. So how fucking slow is the one semi going, right? Like if another <laughs> semi's passing him in the right hand lane. Yeah. Okay. The semi goes by. The semi I'm behind go, gets over. I, I speed back up the speed limit, pull over, start driving. 30 seconds later, state trooper pulls me over. All right. What, what, what were you doing? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that because that, it took him a minute <laughs> to tell me that. He, uh, took him a minute. All right. Yeah, yeah. So I get up and I pull, he pull, I pull over to the right. He comes to the right hand side of the car. And mind you, I have like stuff in the car. Like I was traveling. I had some boxes from back home. Weed. I was bringing back. Yeah. I had two pounds of weed in the trunk. No. I, <laughs> I was, I was, uh-huh. I had like, I had like just some boxes of stuff from like my grandma's. I had a cooler with some water in it, stuff like that. So he comes up and, and I go, Officer, what did you pull me over for? He goes, I'll get to that in a minute, sir. Do you have your license and registration? Oh. Yes, sir. Ah. I was like, okay. So I handed him the license and registration. Well, my license has a different address than my insurance, which you're supposed to change. So he goes, which one of these addresses is correct? And I'm like, the one on the insurance. And how long ago did you move from that address? And, like, and I knew I should have said, I knew, I knew I should have said, Two weeks ago, but I told him it was a couple months, and he was like, "Okay." And, and he goes, and he goes, "I I pulled you over because <clears throat> I saw that uh, you were following that truck too closely." So I said, "I go, well, well, yeah." And I told him the story. I said, "You know, the truck's going really slow. I got boxed in or whatever." And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "There's a lot of deaths on this freeway out here. You better be careful. If that truck would have slammed on his brakes, you would have oh died." My gosh. So you were you were gonna kill somebody? No, I was gonna get killed if the semi slowed down anymore. Is what he meant. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm trying not to be pissed off because I know this is total bullshit. So I'm like, yes, sir, or whatever. I try to be the you know nice. And then here it comes. He goes, "Do you have any weapons in this car?" And oh I, my god! Oh wait, oh wait. <laughs> That's the first thing you said. Just, just wait. It gets it gets even better. And I go and and I actually I, I carry a rescue knife in my in my console because like I live in Texas. There's flash floods. It's one of those things in case you get swept away in a flash flood, you can break out your car windows. It has like a diamond pointed tip on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I go actually, sir. I do. It's in the, it's in the it's in the console. It's a it's a rescue knife. I go. You can go in yourself and get it. You know that's fine. And he goes, no, just don't reach for it. And I go. Okay, he's looking to fucking shoot me is what my first thought oh was. Oh, my God. So, so I go, okay. Wait, were, were you wearing that red bandana again <laughs> yeah, I, had my, I had my gold-plated <laughs> teeth oh, yeah. in, you know, all that shit. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> so, and then I go, okay. I go, that's fine. He Jeez. goes, he goes, is there any marijuana in this car, sir? <laughs> and I go. Jeez. And, and I go, I go, no, no, no. I go, no, I don't have, there's no drugs in the car. He goes, have you ever smoked marijuana before? <laughs> have you ever? I swear to wow. fucking Christ. Okay. He asked me if I've ever smoked marijuana in my life. So, which, of course, I lied and said no. <laughs> I go, no, no, sir, I don't do drugs. And he goes, have you ever done any drugs before? The fuck? What? This guy was looking to date you. Right. Oh, don't He was interested. <laughs> so then I go, no, no, sir, I've never done any drugs. He goes, is there any alcohol in the car? And I have that cooler. I had a cooler sitting in the front seat with me. And I'm sure that's why I asked. And they go, no. I go, there's, I go, there's just Red Bull. I think a Red Bull and some water. So I opened it and showed him or whatever. Then he goes, are there any large sums of cash in this vehicle? What did he think you were? I have no idea, dude. I, I mean, you know me in real life, Dynamite. I am not a very intimidating. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a small person, but like, I'm not intimidating. You don't look like you don't look like the plug. I can say that. And like I pull, I like have my wallet in the dash, and I was like, "No, man, I just got like 
I think I had $150 cash in my wallet. I'm just, I told you, I'm traveling. I've been traveling for a month. Yeah, right. and, and he goes, he goes, he goes, I'll be, I'll be right back, sir. And so he goes, so he goes back. He comes back. He gives me two fucking citations, one for following too closely and one for not having the correct address on my driver's license. Oh my god. I'm five hours from where I live. So I was gonna go contest it, but by the time I would drive out there, go to court, contest it, blah blah blah, it, I would have wasted so much time and money, it wasn't worth my effort. Just just looking to reach quota. Right. So, but what he told me was, oh, if you go online and change your address, you, they'll waive the, the ticket. So I have to pay, I had to pay like 10 bucks to change my address. They charged me $20 to waive the ticket. I had to sign up for a fucking defensive driving course so I don't get points on my license for following too closely. That was $110. Then I have to fucking oh my get, God. I had to get a, a <laughs> copy of my driving record and send that to the court. That was $12. Then I have to pay for a defensive right. driving course, which is like $30 on its own. All right, so every, everybody wants to know, wh- were you following too close for real? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just us here. Like, now. I it's got close up to the fucking semi, but dude, he was going so slow, I had to almost so slam good. on my brakes so I didn't hit him. So did you already do all these things? I, every, okay. I, I have to do the defensive driving course, and then I have to mail the certificate in. I've done all the rest. Oh, so, no. Okay. No. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, now might not be a good time to tell you, <laughs> but uh, you can do a written contestation. Um, that's kind of a similar thing happened to me. I got pulled over on the five driving to San Francisco, uh-huh. and I was going 85 miles per hour, but I, um, I wrote in and contested it because I didn't want to go out, and um, they waived everything. Son I don't have it. It was a three hundred fifty dollars ticket, and they don't Look tell you that you can write it in. They told me they literally. I called the lady. She told me I had to come there. She's basically fucking Johnny Cochran right now. Dude. She's telling you <laughs> she just right now life. if the glove doesn't fucking fit, Jonas. Well, I've already I've already <laughs> done all the work. I can't now contest it. They're gonna be like, "Fuck you, buddy," or they'll keep my money and say, "Fuck you anyway." So that was my. That's that's like the worst cop interaction I've ever had in my life. So what yeah, I went, he had it out for you. So, oh, yeah, he was like, he must have fucking thought I was fucking uh, Billy the Kid, you know, on the loose, ru- a rugged outlaw from the run. <laughs> Billy the Kid. Yeah, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use the 17th century or the whatever. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Wait, was that, wait, well, is, century, is century forward or back? Because, like, the 19th century is the 2000, no, wait, or is it 20, I don't know. I, I that, that tells how stupid I am about that kind of stuff. But anyways. Melody, have you ever had a crazy cop interaction? Hmm. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to jinx anything. Most of the time, cops leave me alone. I would say the one time somebody was a huge dick to me was the cop that pulled me over on the five. Um, and I was serious. I was going 85 miles per hour because everybody was. But that was... I think the speed limit is maybe 60 in that area. Melody, let me um, ask you a question real quick. I don't mean to interrupt. But if all yeah. your friends were jumping off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge, too? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I would have been plowed over if I was going to speed <laughs> limit. And that's what I wrote into. But I remember after he pulled me over, he was just – I felt so bullied because everybody was doing the same thing. But I just felt very, like, personally targeted. Um, so, yeah, that guy was a freaking dick. But it was the end of the month. I was like, all right, you're probably just trying to meet some sort of quota or whatever. Um, so I oh, just yeah. rode back in and take it uh, and contested it. But immediately after he pulled me over, I had to speed back up to 85 miles per hour again just to match the flow of traffic. And I was sobbing. And my sister was in the driver's or in the passenger seat next to me. And she was freaking out. She's like, "You cannot be going almost 90 miles per hour while you are like." Tears pouring down your face. You're clearly completely emotionally out of control. We might all die right now. <laughs> all right, that's TNT, that's... your turn. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot, which is honestly surprising, um, <laughs> considering my demographic. Um, but I, I was there was one time where I was riding with uh, a good friend of me and Jonas's Todd, and we were going to go see Iron Man. This is the very first Iron Man, if that's dating when this happened at all. Um, and I had a piece of shit car. It was a little, a little hoopty, as, as they call them. And, uh, he had the, my passenger door didn't open. So he was riding in the back seat and we're just driving. I'm going to speed limit. I'm legal. The car is a piece of shit, but it drove. Like driving Miss Daisy? You were like driving him around. It's like your chauffeur. 
I, I, I'm not going to call myself a goddamn chauffeur in my car. I own the car. You can't be a chauffeur. You own the car. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the cop pulls me over. I'm going to speed limit. Everything's legal. And he's like, uh, where are you coming from, fellas? I'm like, uh, coming from the house. He's like, where are you guys going? I'm like, I'm going to go see Iron Man. And he looks at Todd in the back seat, the friend I was driving with, and he asks him, are you okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Todd, Todd looks at me. He looks at the cop, and he's like, yeah? <laughs> the fucking cop is like, okay. Hands me my information and tells us to be on our way. Oh, I'm my like, What the fuck? Wow. I'm like, oh, shit, that's you? <laughs> Are you okay? I'm like, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I do, okay, I don't want to just cop bash. I do have an actual cool cop story I want to tell real quick before we take our first break. So it was Labor Day weekend, probably, God, had to been almost 10 years ago. And I was actually it was leaving. for a job. Yeah, he gave me an HJ. No, joking. Um, <laughs> uh, I was coming, actually leaving Todd's house. And my, our buddy Todd, I was coming home. I was on the turnpike. I was driving. I was speeding. Absolutely. I was going like probably 85 miles an hour. The speed limit 65. I get pulled over. It's like, it's like three o'clock in the morning. Cause I left. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't fucked up at all. I was sober. I was just going home. <clears throat> cop comes up. As the cop comes up to my window, my cell phone goes off and the cop goes, Oh, you can answer that phone. That's fine. And I was like, No, I'm good. I'll call him back. You know what I mean? So he takes, he, he takes my ID and whatever. And he asked me where I was coming, and I told him or whatever, where I was going or whatever. And uh, he goes, he, he didn't even go back to his car. He goes, eh, you're not drunk. He's like, don't even really slow down. Have a good night. See ya. <laughs> I was like, it blew my fucking mind. He specifically yeah. even told me, don't even slow down. Just have a good night. Don't even slow down. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the hell was going... That's like, I guess that's like the, the, my, that, the incident for the falling too close is like the canceling out of that from the karma. Like, he was good, so then I got fucked, so... Have you ever gotten out of a ticket because you were a female? Have you ever used your feminine wilds? I'm not talking to you either, Jonas. Oh, have you ever used your feminine wilds? You should have wilds seen what I did to get out of that. No, anyway. To get out of a ticket? Um, I don't... I mean, I didn't specifically try to do anything, but I think uh, I have gotten out of tickets before. Do you I don't ever, know. Like, I think in play general, people are pretty nice and accommodating if you smile and act nice. But I'm sensitive to the fact that that might be my particular demographic, too. Oh. Uh, do, you, do you play it up, though? You're like, oh, my God, officer, I had no idea I was speeding. Like, do you play or do you just, like, act <laughs> normal? Um, I think I actually get a little bit defensive. <laughs> like, really? If I'm speeding, that means everybody else You're is You're like, what do you mean too? I'm, I'm going like... 85? I was only going 83, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I mean, I wouldn't say it like that. But, I mean, I wouldn't say I act super innocent. I mean, if I'm speeding, I know I'm speeding, but I also know everybody else is doing the same thing. Right, right, if absolutely. If I was a woman, I'd slash a cop a little kneecap. I'd, <laughs> is I'd that give the sexiest little... body part for you? Is that what you do? Hey, like, look, man, don't you kink shame. Me, woman. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying me. Wow. But, Tweet okay. me those kneecap pics, girl. <laughs> yeah. Pics. At TNT Dynamite, send them kneecap pics. Go. <laughs> Just kidding. A girl would have to listen first. Oh, uh, but I'm uh, no, I <laughs> All right. Anyways, all right. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back, and we'll get into some, uh, into some news stories. Hello, this is Kaiser Hoslick from Hollywood Science, and you are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast on the Ace Podcast Network. All right, and we are back on the Crazy Town Podcast with TNT Dynamite and Melody Pang. Uh, and uh, I guess it's time for our new favorite segment of the show... Learning with TNT Dynamite, where he will teach us a vocabulary word. What do you got for us today, TNT? All right. Today's word for learning with dynamite is smegma. Ew. (laughs) Melody must already know what it is. Not everybody knows what this is. Smegma. S-M-E-G-M-A. Smegma is... A sebaceous secretion found in the folds of the skin, generally found under the foreskin uh, of an uncircumcised male. Yuck. 
Come on, man. <laughs> Not everybody knows what this is. I'm trying to educate, dude. Use it I'm in a gonna... sentence. Get it over with. <laughs> Use it in a sentence. Well, we have to use a sentence. Get it over with. Do it. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Melody was having a great date. Oh, my God. <laughs> until, until, until the man that she met on Tinder had a bit of smegma on his zipper. Oh, that was, on the that outside? Was, it can get anywhere, dude. Oh, that was wow. a deal breaker. Oh, I would hope that would be a deal breaker. Jesus, God. What if I didn't recognize it as smegma? It could have been nacho cheese. Oh. <laughs> or Greek yogurt. You're like, we matter. did eat a bunch of yogurt on that date. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, all right. Well, tune in next week for that and see what awesome word TNT will get oh, you. Oh, God, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> yuck. All right, guys. I'm going to get into uh, the first news story of the day. Have you ever uh, heard about those laws that they they put out that ban, like, adult industries from being within a certain vicinity from, like, sometimes it's a school or a road or, or whatever? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like, you can't have a strip club or a porn store within so many meters of, like, a school building or a government office or whatever. You guys, have you guys heard of that before? No, but, that, yeah, that seems to make sense. Okay. I've, I've known those before, like, you know, I mean, it's almost like the reverse of, like, pedophiles can't be within so many feet of children, but it's like a business rule instead of a sick oh, fucking person. Oh, you're yeah. calling, you're talking about a crime against humanity and a legal business here. Well, depending what business is doing, maybe they're doing crimes against humanity, too. Oh, my God. Anal <laughs> is legal in at least 48 of the 50 states, all right? All right, all right. So, all right, anyway. All right, so I knew this happened, but I guess I, I didn't realize that it could happen to businesses that are pre-existing. Like, if they, you know, like, I thought they would almost be grandfathered in. But I guess this story comes from India. So India passed a law that where bars could not be within 500 meters – which, for us U.S. metric system people, is that metric? Meters. No, that's, that's, uh, whatever. Anyways, it's a third of a mile. <laughs> don't, don't hate on me, guys. No, I'm not, dude. Your, your math is impeccable. Keep it going. Uh, from a national or state highway. So this made a lot of bars and restaurants angry because former locations that were prime were now unable to sell alcohol to their customers. So they uh-huh. were, so they were either forced to move their business or lose revenue from selling alcohol, which I'm sure was a major source of revenue for, you know, a sports bar. Or I, I, Do they have sports bars in India? I don't know. But regardless, can you guys think of any other option that these bars or restaurants would have as a workaround other than moving their bar or closing their location? Just lie about it and sell alcohol anyway? Like prohibition. Get creative. Put on your, put on creative. your thinking cap, yeah. Oh, they could, they could sell it. Don't like a like an ice cream truck with alcohol in it. Wow! They can oh, get a, yeah. they, they can have like a camel drawn fucking <laughs> liquor truck. Okay. Oh my gosh! I'm Jesus. sorry, is that racist? That's not racist. Is it? <laughs> I don't. Do they? Is that India? Dude, I don't know. Oh. What do they have in India? Sphinx. That was, that's a cow. Probably man. a lot of cows. Yeah, right? No, those are sacred over there. Do they? I don't All know. All right. All right. Well, this bar, it, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's A-I-S-W-A-R-Y-A. So, Aswara Bar. It sat about 150 meters from the road. So, like, so they would have had to close their doors, change their location, something. So, a few days before the ban went into effect, the employees started building concrete walls. Uh-huh. So, why would they do that, you ask? They built a fucking maze leading to the bar. Oh, my gosh. So by the time they were done, (laughs) the closest bar stool was 520 meters from the road. Wow. Good idea. Best part, they let them stay open. They said said it was – it let them work. They said it worked. So in in the article, the owner was quoted as saying – a good walk will do them good on their way to the car anyways. <laughs> How many people get lost in this maze? Or is it not a maze, or just like a long-ass tunnel? I think it's like a back-and-forth, like, not like a true maze, but like a back-and-forth, like, hallway almost, just to make it that long. Like the line wow. from Magic Mountain. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Yeah. Nice. That's nice working, boys. <laughs> but also scary. The last place I want to be when I'm hammered is in a maze. <laughs> no. 
I was thinking like a hedge maze from fucking Shining. <laughs> yeah. I probably oh. was that part. Melody, you're from the Midwest. Do they ever, did you ever go to corn mazes? Yes, they're scary as F. Yeah, they are. We always want to go with tall people, because I feel like they can probably just see over it. But I'm freaking short, and I just feel like if I got lost in one, it could be days. Yeah, they have, like, those weird mazes that are all mirrors. I've never done, like, one of those mirror mazes. I figured that one would be, like, really crazy, because both sides is a mirror. It's, like, infinite. Every way you look. Tyne, have you ever done a maze? Like, one of those Uh, actual... I'm not not really into leaving the house. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> really, I'm all about that. Life. They're like, can I build a maze for my bathroom to the kitchen? Because I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> all right. So that was it on that. I thought that was pretty ingenious of them to do that, though. I thought that was a really good way to get it's around. Good. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest. If that happened to me, I would not have thought of that. No, I wouldn't have either. Melody, you? No, definitely not. I wouldn't have because I guess it depends on how they measure it too. Because they can measure closest distance to the freeway, and then the maze wouldn't count at all. Yeah. But they essentially built a, I mean, yeah. A, a long it's hallway. A long hallway to their bar. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> all right, so on to the next story. Did you guys hear recently about the 20 tons of Nutella being stolen from Germany? No. Okay. I've never had a Nutella. Uh, well, what? Uh, all right, I'll get what into is, that. What is Nutella? I'll, wait, I'll, exactly. I'll, get in, I'll get into that in a second. Okay, Nutella right. is basically it's a, ch- a hazelnut chocolate spread that comes in a jar similar to the consistency of peanut butter. So we'll believe it. It's at that. delicious. Basically, the story says that a refrigerated trailer, like I, I assume they mean semi truck trailer, with about eighty thousand dollars worth of Nutella and chocolate eggs were stolen. <gasps> the Cadbury's. Uh, I, I think oh it was, my. I think it was a different brand, but yes, a similar, essentially a Cadbury. I want to live in that truck. I know, right? <laughs> they were such sleuths about it. They go. The article stated a smoke a spokesman told the local media the proprietors would have needed a truck of their own, not just a car, to be able to tow such heavy cargo. <laughs> like they hooked up a Dodge Neon to the semi trailer and pulled it away. <laughs> No. So, what, so where, where's the money in stealing chocolate? Though? I don't know, but they said the best part about this is the same weekend, another trailer with thirty tons of fruit juice was also stolen. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Someone's gonna be on a crazy sugar high. I imagine some like rogue <laughs> trucker sitting in a cave somewhere in the forest with like Nutella on his shirt, drinking orange juice, like in a wife beater, like just like in a sugar coma, like Winnie the Pooh in the honey pot, just like shoving Nutella in his face. That's a great stash. I hope he's donating it all to women on their periods. <laughs> he should. Totally. So, and then the, I think, okay, I said the other part was my best part. This is the part I think is probably the what the, the police came out with a statement. And what Let me they guess, said. A, another truck with 40 pounds of insulin. <laughs> no, you have 40 pounds of insulin. <laughs> yeah. The police Sorry, put out a public notice. Anyone offered large quantities of chocolate via unconventional <laughs> channel should report it to the police immediately. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Craigslist dad, like, y'all need some Nutella? <laughs> <laughs> he opens his coat. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> like Nutella hanging from the inside of his jacket. Cadbury eggs on the other side. Right, right. The fucking Capri Suns <laughs> in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I got that ecto cooler. So this leads me into what I wanted to talk about. Uh, TNT, you already said that you've never had Nutella, and Melody, you said it's delicious. So, it so, is. so you do like Nutella, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Now, in TNT, you didn't even know what it was, so I guess this is, isn't really relevant for you. So, Melody, how do you eat Nutella? Do you put it on a sandwich, or do you put it on ice cream, or, like, how do you what do you, how do you normally eat Nutella? I usually put it on a slice of bread, and then I put another slice of bread with peanut butter on it, and then I chop up bananas, and I make a Nutella peanut butter banana sandwich. And chocolate. Mm. That, that actually sounds really good. She had a whole system ready. It's about, it's about, it's about two days worth of calories, but, <laughs> but, but really good nonetheless. So let me ask you a random question, Melody. Would you yes. ever do the same thing with canned chocolate frosting? Ooh. Yeah, that sounds really gross. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it also sounds very unhealthy, right? Yes. How many cakes do you need to make? So, but let me, let me break, I'm gonna blow your guys' mind. Fact. Chocolate frosting is better for you than Nutella 
nutrition-wise. Is that right? No fucking joke. Nutella, one tablespoon of Nutella, has 100 calories, 6 grams of fat, Two saturated, one mi- one uh, one milligram of ke- cholesterol, and eleven grams of sugar. Chocolate frosting, seventy five calories, three grams of fat, one gram of saturated fat, no cholesterol, and seven and a half grams of sugar. So essentially, it's better to put chocolate frosting on your stuff than it is to put Nutella on it. Wait, wait, Jonas. What, what, do you work for fucking Big Frosting? Yeah. Are you like, are you in bed with fucking Betty Crocker? Yeah. Oh, Betty Crocker's my side piece, homeboy. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what you got it in for Nutella for, man. Seems no, like... I saw this online like probably six months ago, and I thought it blew my mind that something people eat like daily, some people eat daily or for breakfast or give to their kids, is worse for them than than them putting chocolate frosting on it. But no one would ever put chocolate frosting like on toast. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a weird texture. Right. I think if chocolate frosting was smooth and creamy like Nutella the, and <laughs> called something else that wasn't chocolate frosting, I think I would be open to it. It's called not it's, chocolate it's, frosting. It's, Put it on your toast spread. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> call it something else and make it smoother and creamier. And I would as, put that on my bread. As a resident Nutella uh, extraordinaire in the group, uh, do they have a, a, a low-fat alternative? No. I'm surprised, no. actually. Probably soon. Yeah, or they'll have, like, a gluten-free Nutella. It'll be, oh. like, it'll be like the grossest <laughs> shit you've ever had. <laughs> Come on. They actually, you know those little snacks we had when we were kids, uh, TNT, that were, like, you get, like, four crackers and, like, some uh, cheese, and they come with a little red stick, and you'd spread the cheese. Yes. Handy snacks, bitch. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? Handy, handy snacks. snacks. They are called oh, handy yeah. snacks. So, they actually have Nutella like that, but with, like, pretzel rods. You can get, like, pretzel rods and Nutella. Oh. Have you ever seen this, Melody? They have them at, like, Walmart and stuff. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> like I mean, they taste like exactly like you'd expect them to taste. Yeah. I figured that that was probably, like, I didn't I didn't understand. Maybe this guy works for Big Frosting, and he's trying to, like, get oh, rid of all the you. Nutella. Yeah, I think you work for Big Frosting the way you <laughs> trying to get Nutella out of the cupboards of all our listeners. <laughs> I'm like, just put chocolate frosting on your toast, guys. It's okay. Promise. Yeah. All right. That's all I have for this segment. I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we're going to play Are You Urban? So we will be right back on the Crazy Town Podcast. This is Adam from the Odd Dad Out Podcast, and in case you forgot, we're both listening to the Crazy Town Podcast. <laughs> the crazy town podcast where we're here to have the are you urban game of the ages melody pang versus tnt dynamite will he fall folks will he lose a game i'm not going easy on you good don't <laughs> first of listeners, let me break it down again real quick what are you urban is it's our urban urban dictionary based game how it works there's 10 words some of them i'll read the definition they give me the word some of them i'll read the word they'll give me the definition the person who's asked the question first gets first crack to answer. If they get it right, they get a point. If they do not get it right, the other person can steal for two points. And if neither person gets it right, I give out a pity point for the best answer that was given. So that's really it. We'll go back and forth for ten words. Whoever has the best score is the winner. So, uh, uh, Melody, you are our guest. Why don't you uh, pick a number between one and ten who's ever closest they'll get to pick, Who, if they want to go first or last. Number six. TNT? That's, that's such a safe number. I'm going ten, Jonas. <laughs> Alright, well, the, the number was four, so Melody, do you want to go first, or do you want to go second? Bullshit. Uh, I'll go first. Alright, cool. Alright, here we go. The first question is going to be, uh, one that I give you the word and you give me the definition. What if okay. this was submitted on January 19th, 2012 to Urban Dictionary by Not Happy Jan 25? Oh, yeah. What is, Not Happy Jan. What is <laughs> the brown touch? The brown touch is what happens when 
you get poked through when you're wiping your ass after you take a big dump. <laughs> oh my fucking god! Actually, she that got is, it. That, no, that's incorrect. But I love the. That's answer. not it. No, that's not what? it. What? Oh, that's okay. good. Holy that's good. shit! Wow. You I'm submitting a new definition. Yeah, you gotta remember, these are just random people submitting these answers, so they can be I, anything. So. I honestly thought that she got it right because that's what I thought it was, but that helped me out a little bit. Okay. All right. What do you got, TNT? Uh, I believe that the brown touch is... He gets so technical on his answers, Melody. <laughs> I was an English major. <laughs> um, the brown touch, I believe, is uh, that that feeling that you get when you have to take a urgent bowel movement. <laughs> no, that's wrong as well. Give me the buzzer. What it is... I'm giving Melody the, the pity point, because that was the best answer yeah, I've ever heard. It. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> The correct answer is similar to the Midas touch, but instead of everything you touch turning to gold, everything turns to shit. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I like hers way better, even though, even though. Yeah, uh, yeah she earned it, dude. Yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> I thought All right. it was the right this answer. This is the first honestly. time you've been losing ever at this game, TNT, by the way. Holy shit. Enough. All right. She's come swinging. Your, your answer, or your word, what is... Oh, wait. It was submitted by Misfit on December 7th, 2003. What mm-hmm. is Jimmy Jazz? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Jimmy I can, Jazz? I can use it in a sentence, but it's not going to help you. All right. Can, can you use it in a sentence even though it's not going to help me? Man, that dude is pulling a Jimmy Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> can I Can I have, is, is it a, a noun, verb, adjective? Oh, it doesn't say, man. Um, it is, uh, I guess it's kind of a verb. Yeah, I oh. guess. Yeah. It's kind of country, a verb. Country of origin is American. Part. You like to ask that? It's American. That's my, that's my favorite part of speech. It's kind of a verb. Like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's helpful. <laughs> um, Dude, they don't, give, jazz, I, what? they don't give what it is on Urban Dictionary, man. Come on. Uh, dude, they need to. Come on, I thought this was a professional program. <laughs> I think that Jimmy Jazz is uh, some sort of redirection, uh, trying to point somebody in a, in a direction to get their mind off of the uh, task at hand. Okay, that is incorrect. <laughs> Melody, what you got? I think pulling a Jimmy Jazz is, is what happens uh, with your straight guy friends who turn a little gay when they're wasted. <laughs> Pity point. That is not right, but I'm giving it to her. You gotta bring your step up your A game, TNT. You're, you're, Ooh, you're, you're, is... <laughs> she's gonna shut you out. Fucking trained. <laughs> all right. I submitted all of these myself. Yeah, she is misfit <laughs> and not happy J in twenty five. Uh the actual answer is to be consistently drunk for more than forty eight hours and lack control. How the fuck is that what it is? That's what, hey, man, ask Misfit. Call him up, bro. It's an adverb, motherfucker. Describing your drunkenness. I, all right. You get the buzzer. You win. <laughs> That's for you. Melody, this one is, I'm yeah. going to give you the definition, and then you got to try to guess the word. Okay. This was submitted by Nilistic Zero on March, thir- March 12th, 2004. It's the time of day at which drinking a beer becomes necessity. The term is 10 a.m. <laughs> no, <laughs> good no. guess, though. No, no, that, that's a good guess. TNT, you got anything? <laughs> well, Jonas, I believe that the term you're looking for is beer 30. <laughs> that is correct. It is oh. two, two points for the steal. Look at you coming up in the clutch. <laughs> Damn, how the hell did you know that, dude? I wouldn't have gotten because that. Because I'm a millennial, bro. I, I, this is, this is our culture. You're the oldest millennial in the country. We've already talked about that. I don't care. I'm a millennial, bro. Oh, whatever. You're not going to trick me. All right, here we go. Here's your, here's your, here's your definition. Submitted by right. No Mercy with an I-366 on February 19th, 2005. Someone who has super, super, uh, let me start over. Someone who has surpassed the levels of jerk and asshole, however, not yet reached fucker or motherfucker. Ooh. 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 Um. Is it, is it just me? 
Is it me? Is it TNT Dynamite? Is that your real answer? <laughs> yeah. And... No. All right. Oh, look, 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 wait, hold on, it's coming, it's coming. There, there it is. <laughs> Melody, what do you got? Um, I would call this person a douchebag or a dickhole. Which one are you going to pick? Oh, my God, is one of them right? Um, no. no. Man, when was this, 2004? Five. 2005? Ugh. I'm going to go with douchebag. Two points for Atlantis the steal. Morissette. That is absolutely correct. It is douchebag. Really? <laughs> it's fucking douchebag! <laughs> it is douchebag. Isn't that about around the time people started using that term? That's why I, I give the date. I give the, I give the <laughs> date because it may help you ta- date the reference. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, that's that's crazy. I wasn't even alive then, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're 12 years old. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you said 95, right? No, I don't know. Whatever. Let's go. Good job. Yeah, that was good. All right, Melody, your okay. your word. Here's here's the actual word. I need the definition. What is a buster? Submitted a buster? by submitted by Silent E, September 9th, 2005. A buster. Is another word for a scrub. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that. Someone who can't hang or just acting like a punk bitch. So, yeah, I mean... Ow, <laughs> that was a fucking layup! That was they're, a layup! They're random, dude. They're, 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 they're random, man. You're, you're, you're falling behind. You need to step your game up. Yeah. What can I do, man? Right. What can I do? All right, your, your word. What is Vader Vapor? Submitted by Jeff Bo, May 25th, 2009. <laughs> Gives me Vader Vapor. You get What's a Buster? <laughs> no, it's straight from TLC lyrics. I know, right? <laughs> we were just talking about you and your 90 music. All right, Vader Vapor. Can, can we spell the first part of the word? I know the second part. V-A-T-O-R. V A T O R. T as oh, in not trench. like Darth Vader. Right. Yeah. See, right. and you see, that's why I haven't spell it. People think I'm bullshitting when I tell. Now, the <laughs> country of origin. It's American. Okay, <laughs> dude. Vator. V A T O R. Yes. Vapor. Yes. V A P O R. Correct. All right. This is the the act of a. Uh, Blowing a V-shaped cloud when one vapes their <laughs> electronic cigarette device. Okay, you're wrong. But was, I know. W- vaping wasn't even around in 2009, dude. Well, dude, what the fuck? No, you don't know what it is either. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Melody probably does. She seems really good at this game. No, I have no idea. <laughs> but my guess, Vator Vapor. Yes. Um... I think it is the fart of a vampire alligator. God damn it! <laughs> Pity point goes to Melody, but no, that's God wrong. God damn it! It is so a, good! The answer is the smell of an elevator. Ah. Oh. Vader vapor. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> no. All right. Sense. Melody, this is a definition. I need the word. Okay. It was submitted by Devil X Dog. Devil was spelled D three V one L though, so you know he's totally <laughs> cool. <laughs> February third, two thousand nine. For one's head to explode under extreme mental pressure. Mind blown. The answer is blow your mind, but yeah, same. Yep. Ah. Yeah. So, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, man, dude, she's you, you, you got good layups. I hey. get goddamn Vader vapor. <laughs> All right. TNT. Here yes. we go. Your question. Yeah. yeah. Submitted this by. Is worth, this is worth seven points, right? Uh, she has seven. You have two. Yeah, I don't even know if you can so, pull this off. So this is a seven point question right here. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. This was submitted by Big Johnny, July oh, yeah. July ninth, two thousand two. Sexual intercourse without a rubber. Raw dog. That is correct. See, oh my not God. the only one getting fucking... That was seven points. I'm winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I'm not winning. This one here oh is my God. by Crispy2K8, April 13th, 2008. What is a flurg? F-L-E-U-R-G-H. 
Flurg. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Ugh. Good luck. A flurg is hmm somebody who's chunky and doughy, like they eat a lot of flour and is as large <laughs> as an iceberg. So a very large, overweight man <laughs> or woman. That is so wrong. <laughs> it, it isn't correct, but I like I like where you went on that. TNT. A flurg. Hmm. I think a flurg is uh when Fergie from the pop group what was the name of that group? Help me out here. Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, there you go. Fergie <laughs> from the Black Eyed Peas uh trying out for a part in uh Flubber. <laughs> <laughs> The remake of Flubber. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, that's wrong, but I'm giving you the pity point on that they one. They call right. it Flurg. Is uh, that all right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's wrong. Okay. Yeah, that's wrong. But one more, one more for you, Dynamite. You actually cannot win. There's no way you could start? possibly win. Yeah, yeah can we get the definition? It is a word to describe a really annoying person. That's Ugh. the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Okay. Lame. Uh, and then TNT. That one's not catching on. <laughs> TNT. Your final question that will at best make you two points behind. <laughs> what is? This was submitted by Pud on August 23rd, 2004. What is a cock slob? <laughs> well, Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you did to me just the uh, last weekend. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! Uh, whatever. <clears throat> I did it back. It's <laughs> mutual. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, let's just uh, let's just go. Let's just go there with it then. I mean, you brought this on yourself. Um, it is the act of giving fellatio to a bro. That is that's incorrect. Okay, well you know. Sometimes it's not the the best answer. <laughs> <laughs> Melody, you got one. You want to try? Oh, we're not allowed to ask if it's a verb or a noun, right? Yeah, I no, mean, I it's, it's yeah. a noun. This one's for sure a noun. It's not kind of a noun. Oh, okay, it's a noun. <laughs> the person who is a cock slob. Uh, I think it's when you hmm, a person who gives. Oh shit! You just said that. And then they say gives really floppy head and leaves <laughs> shit everywhere. <laughs> Or like gum in your mouth and just leaves it all over the dish. Wow. Whoa. Like, like a like a fucking gum condom when you're done. <laughs> that yeah. fucking goes over. Now, that sounds like a cock slab to me. It actually is a person that takes on as many cocks as possible. So a slut. Oh, uh, that makes sense too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's so, sloppy with. I, when you say cover the dick with gum, I have to give you the pity point. So final score. <laughs> Set uh, eight to four, Melody. Yeah, you have job. you have killed the dragon. You <laughs> slayed him. <laughs> slayed. All right, so let me yeah. ask you this: even if Slate you are small. on as another a guest host again, will you come back on and defend uh, or at least give TNT a rematch so he can become the champion again? Yeah, I'd love to. All right, cool. So even if even if even if we don't do a whole show, we'll at least get you on to do. Are you urban again? So TNT can try to, to can try to beat you and uh, and, and all that. So that's all right. good. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna jump I, I, I right back. I couldn't lost anybody better. <laughs> to another topic. It's actually a. I like to I like to use um, Ask Reddit questions. Does, does anybody else f- look at Ask Reddit? Do you guys follow Reddit at all? I do not. I don't. Okay. Well, they have, they have a subreddit called Ask Reddit where people ask random questions and then people list their answers. It can be funny. It can be serious. It can be whatever. So this question, what is the dumbest way that you've ever hurt yourself? Melody, go. Uh, I run into a lot of tables. That seems like a lame answer, though. <laughs> like, are you talking like elbows, shins, feet, toes? Uh... I'm really short, so it's usually my upper thigh. Gotcha. Is there any particular story you have where you've actually done something dumb to actually injure yourself? Um, I'll have to get back to you. Okay. Not that you I don't hurt do, myself a lot. Do you find yourself cursing at the table after you run into it? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. Googler shares. I oh, yeah. I run into a lot of mannequins, and then I'm always <laughs> oh, sorry, because you think it's a person. You're like <laughs> when you're at the store and you just back into a mannequin, you don't know it's not real, like, and sorry. then you just look stupid. <laughs> Everyone's like, look at that girl talking to Mannequin. She must be on crack. <laughs> she needs friends. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me let me read you guys a couple of the ones that were online before I get into me and uh, Dynamites here. Uh, this one guy says, I, I was challenged one day to clap behind my back while doing a push-up at the gym. I did it. Oh my was, god! I did it and was successful. Later that night, I tried to show my girlfriend, but at the time, I was in a suit and didn't have the same range of motion. I did not <laughs> succeed and split my chin open and broke my molar. Damn. That sounds true. Like, do you guys think that's true? I, that sounds pretty true. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can make that up. All right. Well, no, well, next one. I kicked a coconut, thinking it would be similar to a soccer ball, and naturally, I I block. I broke my toe. Wow. Uh, this I like this one a lot. One time I tried to fart while playing online poker really late while my girlfriend was yes. asleep. About half the <laughs> fart came out before I realized more was on the way out. I caught that before it was too late, and I jumped up and started to run to the bathroom. I had on headphones and yanked my head to the left, pulled my computer tower over as I kicked a 25-pound weight on the floor, broke my toe, and shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> That one's probably made up. <laughs> that one's probably made up. I don't know if you could make that up. That's pretty that good. Is, that is a series of unfortunate events that uh, I don't feel. Uh, I was a writer. Yeah. All right. <laughs> TNT, how did you, what's the dumbest way you've hurt yourself? Oh, my God. You know I've never broken a bone? I haven't no, either. No. Knock on no. wood. Me neither. Knock on wood. Three Great of us. Where is it? What? what are the chances? Yeah. So have you ever done anything just to, I mean, just to stupidly hurt yourself? I, I broke a rib at the gym one time. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Like, like you best. literally broke a rib? Yeah. You know yeah. that's a bone, right? Yeah, I'm well aware, dude. You just like said you bitch. never broke a bone. Uh, well, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, like, it was, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if I had broke a rib, I would be like, yeah, I broke my ribs. All right, fine. Fuck you. I guess I broke a rib. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did you manage that? Like, what were you doing that you it broke the, a rib? What's the machine where you, like, you, like, do, like, crunches, but you're sitting up? You're, like, in the sitting position, oh, and then you lean forward and do crunches that way? I know what you're talking I don't know what it's called. Yeah. It's like a crunch yeah. machine or something stupid. Dude, I don't know what the fuck I did. I was must have been using it wrong or some <laughs> shit, but I totally, like, cracked a rib. Like I didn't, like, like, break it and, and oh, keep like, it, like a had, rib sticking out of my chest, but you like a, I did crack it. You had, like, a hairline fracture or something? Yeah, yeah. God, yeah how did you do that? Like, when you were laying back down? No, yeah. like, I was leaning forward, and fucking, I just heard, like, something in my chest just, like, popped. Oh, my and, gosh. And then, like, hurt to breathe for, like, a good month. <laughs> well, right. And they're like, there's nothing we can do. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Great, great. Take Tylenol. I'm like, oh, yeah, that did nothing. <laughs> All right. Let me jump into a couple more of that song line. And then I'll go into me. This guy says, I was trying to open a little cup of pudding with a steak knife, and it went right through my hand. Uh. <laughs> so I could see that being true. Yeah. I tried to jump over a bonfire and hit someone midair who had the same idea. I won. Oh, my God. I won because I didn't need three weeks in the burn unit, just a bottle of aloe vera. <laughs> So terrible. Like, can you imagine, like, how did two people have this idea to jump over the fire at the same time? Yeah, uh, terrified of that group of friends. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, no one was like, no, dude, that's a bad idea. Like, <laughs> the knife I was trying to cut a cucumber with wouldn't cut, so I used my index finger to push down on the blade, just as I assumed it was a blunt knife. However, the knife was upside down, and I cut my finger to the bone and required four stitches. Wow. Good idea. So, Good idea. I mean, I just don't really see that happening. Like, you, know, you like you put your hand on it and push real hard to get it to cut through, to strip yeah, yeah. the damn bone. Ugh. A lot of kitchen accidents. Ugh. So a lot of kitchen accidents. So mine, I've actually talked about this on another on an episode before. It was the unlucky people episode we did when I was I was like eight, and we were we were sliding on blacktop. Uh, oh, yeah. Like a slip and slide. My parents were really good. You know, they let us slide on wet blacktop. I decided to try to slide on my ass. And when I slid, I hit my ass and my head whipped back and smacked on the blacktop. And I pre I, never, I didn't get diagnosed, but I was pretty sure I was concussed. Yeah. So that's that one. One other one, I, I an honorable mention about my mother. Love her to death. One time I was about eight. 
I was out in the garage. I it was when Nike Air shoes came out back like yeah, in, in the early nineties or whatever. And I decided they make you jump higher. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> um, I wanted to know like what was inside them because I was like, oh, they're Nike Airs, and they have like a little like panel on the side and shit. So I started. I went out to the garage and started cutting it open with a razor knife. And about I was I was like forty minutes into this bitch because I was cutting little strips and trying to pull it out. My mom comes out and goes, "What the hell are you doing?" Don't do that. And I go, Mom, I really want to see what's inside this shoe or whatever. So she's like, fine, I'll do it. Eight seconds in, she sliced her fucking hand open and had to go to the ER and get <gasps> stitches. <laughs> so, oh, my God. So if she was here right now, she would tell us that she sliced her hand open trying to cut a shoe apart for her son when he was eight years old. So <laughs> so I'll give her I'll give her props on that. So, oh, that's adorable. Yeah, I know. All right. Uh, TNT. What do you want? Do you want to ask Melody about ghosts? Yeah! Thank what? you for reminding me. Woo! Ghost <laughs> stories. All right, hey, look, uh, do you believe in ghosts? Or I can't say I've personally encountered any or super <laughs> crazy experiences, but I think so. I think there are enough ghost stories and, like, haunted hotels and stuff like do you that. Have, do you have any that a friend has shared with you that you found especially interesting? Um, well, I meet a lot of really weird people because I'm an actor and I spend time with other actors. Um, so a lot of time we sit around on set talking about uh, fortune tellers and out-of-body experiences. <laughs> or I hear these stories. <laughs> Yeah, it's, there's a lot of downtime on set. Like I took a whole box of core seed in 2002 and had an out of body <laughs> experience before they banned it. When people used to get fucked up off over the counter drugs. <laughs> do you have anyone that stands out that you want to share? I, I do have one, but I like to give mm. you the first crack. No, I don't think anything stands out. They're all just kind of, oh, I was in a hotel, and then suddenly I felt like I couldn't breathe, and of course everyone else is like, oh my god, that happened to me too. I'm like, well, uh, one of you guys is probably trying uh, to tell the truth. <laughs> you know. are all high right now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Jonas, how about you, man? You got anything that you believe um, in? Ghosts? I'm more, ag- I take like an agnostic approach about it because like if I saw some proof, I would definitely believe, but I don't not believe per se. Um, I went to a place in San Diego. Have you ever been to San Diego, Melody? Yet? San Diego? Yeah, I love it. Have you it's been so to that, clean. Have you been to that haunted, that haunted place they have there in that in that old town area where like there's like a courthouse in it and like it's a house that you can pay to walk in? Have you been to that? No, I haven't, but I would. I can't remember what it's called. We uh, we went when we were on vacation out there. Like they swear that it's haunted and you can take pictures and the ghosts show up in the pictures and da 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 da. And <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's like. It's probably, I mean, it's, it's, it may not even be worth the $12 you pay to walk through it for five seconds or whatever. <laughs> but um, I didn't see any ghosts, you know what I mean? So what about you, TNT? Uh, I do have one occasion. I was actually thinking about this prior to the segment. Um, probably when I was about 18, 19 years old, I was dating a young lady who she was into Wicca. Now, um, that's kind of like, uh, modern day witches for the most part. But she was, she was into that kind of stuff as a, a lot of teenage girls are. And, uh, she actually. <laughs> wait, 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 really, wait, wait. Let, let me stop you right there. So teenage what? girls, <laughs> teenage girls are into witchcraft? A lot of times, yeah. You'd be surprised, man. The craft. You remember that movie? Oh, you're talking about like when we were teenagers. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm not like current teenagers day. now, dude. I'm like 30. We're not going to be talking about like yesterday. I'm talking like, like I thought you were generally speaking about how teenage girls are into witchcraft. I mean, a lot of them are. You'd be surprised, man. Well, That's there were those why. girls that killed that girl, the girl, or tried to kill her because of Slender Man. I mean, it's out there. Um, but anyway, I was dating a girl, and she was into Wicca, and she also read tarot cards. Um, one day she went to her grandmother's house after she had passed away and her grandmother was also into the stuff. And that's kind of where she picked it up. Well, in the attic, she found a deck of tarot cards. And I, after, I mean, I wasn't really into it. I grew up in a, in a heavily Christian household, but, uh, I, you know, I showed some interest in learning how to read tarot cards myself. So she gave, she gifted me the deck and she decided to try to teach me. Um, I learned kind of this by watching her a little bit of what to do and she kind of like went over with me. So I decided to do a reading. And initially when you start out with the deck, you ask a question 
and then the cards tell a story. And then the story usually pertains to the question. The first thing I asked was, okay, if there's a spirit behind these cards, tell me about yourself. I go through the story, and it told about how, essentially how it started out as high prestige, and then it was cast out, and then it, you know, it lost its, uh, its power or its prestige. The last card that I got was the devil card. I was like, okay, crazy, you know, just maybe, maybe, maybe luck at a draw. I did it again. It told a very similar story. The cards were a little bit different, but the last card was the devil card. Done. Wait, no, 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 that's not even it though. So then I'm like, all right, no way. So I call, I call my girlfriend into the room at the time and I call somebody else into the room at the time as well. And I'm like, I've gotten a devil card in the last card. And she's like, well, the devil card doesn't really mean that. I'm like, I understand that. <laughs> Ice in a row. I had her shuffle the deck. I had him shuffle the deck. It read a very similar story. Was well, not exactly, but the same high power, lost power, um, regret, and a lot of uh, just like uh, a lot of anger involved. For the third time in a row, the last card was the devil card. I immediately handed her the deck and I swore off fucking with tarot cards for the rest of my life. To this day, I still know a little bit, but I will never forget the time I got the devil card. Even though it does not mean anybody who's into the stuff and knows how to read tarot cards will tell you that it does not necessarily, the devil card does not mean Satan himself. But I got the devil card three times in a row at the end of that very last card, three times in a row. Never again. So, <laughs> to clarify, is there only one devil card per deck? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Should that I get a- you a devil card t-shirt for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I wouldn't mind. I'll wear it, but I'm not going to play with it. I'll get you a framed devil card. You can framed and matted hanging on the wall. <laughs> But over over the doorway to your bedroom, so that every time you walk in, you can touch it. <laughs> that's awesome. Do it. But wow. yeah, that's my that's my that's my supernatural story. Oh good. I don't dude. I don't usually. Do it, but yeah, I know, right? That me fucking shit and bricks. I was like, get that deck out of here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so so Melody. So basically, you've never had you've never no one you know personally has ever had like a a very crazy, like, I saw a ghost type story, more of, like, out-of-body experience stuff you hear from, like, actors and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of anything super concrete where they're like, oh, I saw a ghost and it looked like blah, blah, blah. I don't right. know. Or, like, I lived yeah. in a house and the and the fucking cupboards would open and close or, like, what, you know, I had no. no. Not everybody believes, man. Your parents, they don't, they don't have any beliefs like that? I think they believe it's real, but I don't think they personally encountered anything. No. My family's kind of brought up not to believe in that shit, and it just kind of transitioned to me as well. So, oh, gotcha. Well, they're, they're more like we're gonna be asking. We're gonna be asking any guests that we have in in this uh, the season. You know, the same question. So, just thank you for being a part of it. I'm glad I got to finally get that story off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> took me a while to remember it. But I know, I dude. Yeah, it took it. you for a minute. So, all right, well, <laughs> with that being said, after we had the devil talk, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll come up and uh, do one more quick story and wrap everything up on the Crazy Down Podcast. We're back on the Crazy Town Podcast with TNT Dynamite and Are You Urban Champion Melody Pang. Oh, come on. Just throw it in my face, why don't you? <laughs> Have you guys ever used public Wi-Fi before? <laughs> I'm on public Wi-Fi right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, some of them, they just let you sign on. You can use it right away. Have you ever had the ones where, like, you sign on and then it makes you pop up a web browser and, like, click OK, I agree to the terms and conditions yeah, or whatever? I yes, I also had to do that here. All right. So <laughs> this this will hit you close to home. So there's a company oh, great. in Manchester. This is in the U.K. called Purple. It's a it's a leading Wi-Fi hotspot provider that for places such, you know, Legoland, Outback, Pizza Express, you know, it, and they inserted – at a community service clause. What what it basically did was it was it was set there to make people aware that they aren't reading what they're agreeing to. 
what it did mm. was it it basically made people when they did it they agreed to doing community service at the discretion of purple leading <gasps> to things such as cleaning local parks of animal what? waste providing <gasps> providing That's hugs to so stray dirty. cats and dogs manually relieving sewer blockages cleaning portable laboratories at festivals painting snail shells to brighten up their existence and scraping chewing gum off the streets so oh my great. gosh. There was also a prize to offer anyone who contacted the company and pointed out the clause. Only one person contacted them and said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> There's a South Park episode about that. Is it really? I think there is, yeah. Yeah, yeah did, human centipad. <laughs> yeah, with the Swedish guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah. shit. <laughs> so, I love that song. So, <laughs> Jesus. So they said it was unclear if they would, you know, if this is something that they would even be able to enforce, but the company has come out and said it won't even try. It was more of a publicity stunt. Because uh, they were raising awareness that people don't read terms of service and announced yeah. they were the first company to be compliant under a new new uh, initiative in, in Europe called the GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation. It's a European Union initiative. It's a, it's a new regulation that's intended to simplify terms and conditions and provide transparency for consumers to understand how their personal data will be used. I thought that was really cool because we don't have anything like that here in the U.S. They steal and manipulate and sell our shit like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Google, That's man. awesome. Yeah, isn't that pretty crazy? Like, I guess there was another company that did it to give up your firstborn child, like like another <laughs> joke, another joke type thing. I'm wondering what degree you could take that to. Like, could you like straight up get money out of people and have them contractually obligated to like pay you? Right, like because that is a contract, isn't yeah. it? Is, I mean, I is guess it legally they, binding? They couldn't do it if they call it free Wi-Fi, though. I believe you know what I mean. You can't say it's free and then make you pay them money. Okay, yeah. Mm. yeah. But I mean, I guess essentially that they could, if they wanted to be assholes, they could make all those people do community service, and they could all have to take them to court to get a ruling. Wow. But you know what's kind of messed up about that story? A couple times in my life, like, I've been signing up for a website or whatever, and I'm like, there's a lot of fucking terms of service for this. And in my head, I'm like, I go, you know, if there was something really crazy about it, you know someone would have put it online by now. Except... (laughs) Nobody reads it. Nobody does, dude. I would love, like, a one-sentence summary. Could you just sum it all up for me at the beginning, like a big thesis statement so I wouldn't have to read the entire freaking thing? Right, like like the abstract on all those uh, scholarly articles (laughs) you had to read in school. It's like one paragraph. That would be great. And maybe that, yeah. I think that's what that's for, that eat, that whatever that was, that GDPR. I think that's kind of yeah. what they want it to be. Yeah, I definitely okay. needed like a video or TLDR like walkthrough of fucking what, what it's all about. <laughs> a too long didn't read. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought that was pretty interesting. And then it actually worked out well because you were on a public Wi Fi right now. So <laughs> you better make sure you don't have to. Give up your children or anything. Yeah, you should, you should yeah just, they can have my kids. They just go in. <laughs> <laughs> just go in yeah, and start. Yeah, it's uh, free. Can I give them to you for <laughs> free? Right. I signed up for your wife. You should go in and ask the manager. I signed up for your Wi-Fi. Do you want my firstborn? Because I, yeah, you could totally have him. You should just go and start grilling the manager for no reason. Like, what the fuck, dude? And he'll be like, oh my god, why is she so bad? Yeah. But that, I mean, but it is LA. They're probably like, ah, normal Tuesday on a Saturday or whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that is all the time that we have for today. I do want to thank everyone for listening to the show. I want to thank Miss Melody Pang for for joining us. We had an absolute blast. I had fun, too. Thanks for having me, guys. No problem at all. We would definitely like to have you on again. I'll be in touch. We'll we'll figure something out. Once again, um, tell everybody where they can find you. If you want people to follow you on Twitter, your website, anything you want to promote, go ahead and give it out there now. (laughs) Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates when I remember to tweet. I'm um, at mpeng11, so at mpeng11, and my website at www.melodypeng.com. All right. Do you want to tell everybody in Mandarin in case the, for all the, for all the uh, Mandarin listeners? Mm, no. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. For, for, all, for all you Mandarin <laughs> listeners out there, we, we don't mean for, for us to, uh, to, to not tell you, but, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. Uh, so, well, Twitter's blocked in China, so... Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, they have a, what is that, Weibo or whatever they use over there? Yeah, there's yeah. some 
crazy firewalls up there. Yeah. I don't think you can get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, TNT Dynamite. Thank you again, sir. You want to go ahead and tell everybody where they can find your stuff on the interwebs? TNT yeah, TNT Dynamite. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter. Um, I tweet sometimes. I, I actually did my first tweet today, so I want Yay! you guys to get on, on top of that. At least I think I did. I don't know. I went to look uh, for it. I didn't see it. Yeah, I think it right, so, yeah. Basically, uh, you know, I'm Patrick Stewart. You know, yeah. might as well just make me, me and Patrick Stewart, we both tweet a lot. Right, uh, absolutely. I'm also on the YouTube, uh, TNT Dynamite at YouTube.tube. I'm sure that's the actual address. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, always happy to be back. Always happy to see another show. Thank you for joining us on our journey. All right, and I once again, I am I am Jonas. I am your host. I do want to thank you for listening. Please go on iTunes and subscribe and leave us a review. Um, let me know what you hate about the show. I love hearing it. Um, our, web, <laughs> our our website is a cornucopia of continuous information. Thecrazytown.com. And uh, if you don't follow us on Twitter, at the Crazy Town Pod, do that now, or Aunt Sally will buy you a fruitcake for Christmas and your birthday. Please, no, Aunt Sally. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, I had a blast today. I want to thank everybody. And for Jonas and TNT Dynamite and Miss Melody Peng, we are out. over.